Promoting you to a panel is Maggie. I'm sorry, a panelist? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? It's Oscar. Yes. Some reason it's not. Hello. Hi, Bianca. All right, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Lewis, okay. are we ready? Uh, yes. Okay, good morning, everyone. Today is September 26th, 2022, and I am Debbie Quay, the chair of the Senior Affairs Committee. Welcome to our September meeting. I'd like to start the meeting by reading our mission statement. The mission statement of the Senior Affairs Committee is to be advocates for the betterment of our seniors by promoting the physical, emotional, and social well being of adults aged 55 years and older living in our very diverse community of Miami Beach. So we'd like to welcome you. And um, our first order of business is going to be an introduction and roll call. So we have Blackstone Apartments currently has a vacant seat. Council Towers South, Natasha, are you with us this morning? Let's see, give me one second. She's not. Okay. My co chair, Oscar Lorente, you with us? Good morning, Oscar. Hold on. Good morning. Council Towers North, Gladys. Federation Towers, Magui. Good morning. Four Freedoms, Anilda. Yes, I'm here. Hi. I'm here. Rebecca Hi. Towers, Anna. Hi. Hi, Anna. Good morning. I see you. Stella Mars, Gabby. Hi, good morning. Una Dad, Larissa. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Carolina. Carolina Cudros. No. Hispanic Affairs Committee. Gabriel. He'll probably be joining us shortly. We have a vacant seat now at the Jewish Community Services of South Florida. And of course, Oscar, my co-chair from Mount Sinai Medical Center. Welcome everyone on this beautiful morning. We need to do an approval of the minutes. Lewis, do we have uh, enough members on yet to approve the minutes for July of 2022? Could I have a motion, please? I'll motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Oscar. Do we have a second? Yes, and the order. Motion to approve the, the minutes, okay? Thank you, Nilda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We move minutes, approval, passed. So this morning we have a very interesting program for everyone. It's gonna be an overview of the fiscal year 2022 to 2023, our proposed city budget. John Woodruff, Chief Financial Officer for the city of Miami Beach will be joining us this morning to talk about our uh, budget. Is John, are you with us? Fabulous, Tamika, welcome. Thank you, good morning. Good morning. So, what good news do you have for us? Uh, um, goodie bag of good news. Um, I'm going to touch on pretty much the highlights of what's included in the FY23 budget. Um, before I jump in, can you tell me if you could see my screen? Yes. Thank you. You can. All right, hang on. All right, perfect. So quick introduction. Um, I am Tamika Stewart. I am the budget director. I report to John. Um, John actually got called away to an executive staff meeting. You know, we have a hurricane coming. So 
um, you know, just in case we're doing some prep work in the background. Um, but I've been with the city for 14 years. I measure my time with the city based on my son's age. I started here when he was four months old and he's about to be 14. So, you know, long road for the city of Miami Beach. So what I'll give you is an update of our operating budget and our capital budget. We'll talk a little bit about our reserves, which is our rainy day fund, and I'll tell you what our next steps are. So for those of you who want like extreme detail on the FY23 budget, we actually have a proposed budget book online. Um, I have the, you know, the website there, but if you go to the city's website and go to budget, you can actually find this book. It's hundreds of pages long and it provides details on the overall operating budget. We also have two books on the capital budget if you're interested in specific capital projects. So here we have our overall budget is $806 million. Um, the majority of that is our operating budget. And then we have $73 million for our capital budget. So just for everyone to know, our budget project um, process takes nine months. So we did a kickoff to our department in January. We met with the department since then. We met each department with a city manager to go over their priorities and the request for 23. And then we also had a series of meetings with the commissioners in June and also in July. So this has been a almost one year process and this is about to be delivered. Um, on Wednesday, fingers crossed, all things being equal, we should be adopting the final budget and our fiscal year actually starts October 1. So that's right around the corner. So our general fund budget, which is what most people pay attention to is $382 million and that increased by 8.1 which is unusual in a typical year, um, but then again, because of COVID, costs have increased significantly, as well as, coll as collective bargaining agreements. So we have five unions in the city and uh, all five contracts ended during FY22. So we actually spent a lot of time negotiating new contracts, um, but after 8.1 increase in the budget, only 3.2 is inflation, which is surprising considering the cost of goods right now. Um, collective bargaining took up 2.9% of that increase. And then we'll talk about some of the enhancements that we included in the 23 budget. Uh, one thing I wanted, you know, piece of good news is our millage rate is remaining um, flat. So we're not proposing an increase in the millage rate. You see, we have historically low millage rates and um, we're trying to provide more service without increasing rates. Um, Debbie, you have a question. Yes, can you go back one slide, please, and explain to us what a general fund is and what collective bargaining is and the enhancements? Sure. So the general fund is the fund that your property tax revenues go into. So approximately 60% of the general fund budget is funded by property taxes. And departments that fall under the general fund are like police, fire, the city manager's office, um, code compliance. So most of the city operations fall under the general fund. Now in government accounting, we have several pockets of funds. Um, so we have general funds, which I just described. We also have enterprise funds. So like, for example, the water, sewer, stormwater are enterprise funds, which means that they're not supported by property taxes. Those are supported by the revenues that are generated by charging fees. Parking is another example, sanitation. And then we also have internal service funds. So those are the funds that support our operations internally. So for example, we have a central services office that does the printing for the agenda um, for the commission meetings. We have a fleet management department. We have a facilities division. We have um, he um, medical and dental. So those are internal services that fund um, or work here. The general fund is the fund that most you know, residents or you know business owners are concerned with because that's where the property taxes actually go. Um, okay. You're welcome. So as far as collective bargaining goes, um, because we have unions, every three years, we have three-year contracts. And at the end of the three years, we negotiate with them, you know, what, you know, on their hand, what can they get that's more? Um, enhancement to their contracts. And then for us, we're saying, what can we ask you to give up or what can we tweak to make our management agreement stronger? So uh, we have a police union, we have a fire, we have one for um, people who work in sanitation, for example. And so those are five. And then we have folks like myself who are not in a union. Um, so we don't have any contracts um, outside of our employment contract. Right, and our enhancement. So when we do our budget, what we start with first is our current service level. 
In other words, how much does it cost us to do next year what we're doing right now? And that's where we start with the budget. In addition to that, each department gets to ask us for enhanced levels of service. So a department may say, you know, for example, I am providing, you know, this level of service, I would like to enhance our level of service, or we tried something on a test basis, you know, can we actually fold that into the budget? Anything that's over and above what we're providing right now becomes an enhancement. So we are making it clear to the commission and to anyone who reads the budget, we're doing over and above what we did this year in next year's budget. So that's $7.2 million that we're providing more without increasing the millage rate. Any question? Good. All right, so again, I just mentioned the millage rate is staying flat. Um, just to talk about some of the, the things that were included in the 23 budget, and if you saw the mayor's video, you know, he said this is a public safety budget, and I know that's important to the members of this committee. Um, you may recall that in FY21, we added 17 police officers based on what was happening in the South Beach region, you know, we were, you know things were kind of getting out of hand. And we added 17 police officers temporarily because at the time we couldn't afford to make this permanent. Um, this year, we actually in included these positions as a full-time permanent part of the F um, FY23 budget. So next year, they'll just be a part of the budget. We also added an additional two police officers. Last year, we added two as a result of the Smith and Walensky contract. So as a part of the contract, we projected to receive more revenues from this contract. And so the mayor asked us last year to dedicate some of the incremental funding to fund police officers in the South Beach region. So last year we added two police officers and this year we're adding two more. So that's a total of four so far. And the goal is to add a total of six just based on the revenues from this contract. Um, as far as Marine Patrol um, staff, we are recommending adding five staff and it's not an addition to the, the 17. We're seeing off the 17 positions that we added, we want to repurpose five to just do marine patrol, um, just based on cost for service and what you know we think is needed out there on the water. Um, we're also adding five new fire um, staff, and that's to help the fire rescue. The cost for service on the water have increased, um, especially in COVID. And the fire department said, you know, we actually need to provide more um, firefighters on the water to be able to respond to calls. So. Right now, we may be able to respond to a call, for example, in North Beach, but if another fire happens and we need some help, we'd have to go get you know, help from Miami-Dade Miami County, um, City of Miami, and so far they've been saying, you know, we can help you as much as we can, but at some point you have to be, you know, have your own backfill. So what we're trying to do this year is to provide our own crew to, you know, be able to service both North, South, and as well as Mid Beach. Um, what else are we doing? So we're also converting um, part-time park rangers to full-time. So for the last couple of years, we've had um, a variety of positions, vacant part-time positions. It's really hard to fill part-time positions because most people want a full-time job in order to you know, make their payments. And so what we recommend is convert all the part-time positions to full-time. Um, the commission did approve the first 10 in FY22. So the 23 budget has another 10 and next year we're, plan we're planning to convert the final nine over to a full-time, which will allow us to have hopefully filled positions and more um, coverage on you know, the beach walk, for example, and more in our parks, et cetera. Um, and then we also added the, the nine code officers that we also added te um, temporarily last year, we're gonna actually make them um, permanent. So. In addition to the 17 cops, we're adding nine code officers, and next year they'll be just a part of our current service level. Um, we did want to address, so what we did as a part of the budget process is that we looked at the survey results and kind of wanted to pinpoint what residents and business owners wanted us to pay attention to. So first was public safety, then there was homelessness. And so what we've done, instead of adding staff to our crew, what we did is we're going to work with a contract with New Hope. And they're gonna work with the homeless in the evening hours from seven to 3 a.m. And so now we have a contract with them and they can provide some residential recovery services for up to six people. Um, there is potential for this program to grow. If it is successful, um, we probably will go back to commission to ask for additional funding, but we figured we'd try, you know, see if it's working first, but before we ask for, you know, more funding. As far as cleanliness, that was also on top of um, the priorities for the residents. And so we've enhanced um, sanitation services on the beach walk, also in North Beach. And um, you may have noticed that during COVID, sanitation kind of pulled back on their level of services. 
they have gone back um, in FY22, and uh, the goal is to continue improving their level of service. As far as infrastructure is concerned, we actually increased how much we're transferring um, to pay for our capital projects. So between our capital renewal and replacement fund, which is a fund that we use to replace our existing capital, and the PAYGO fund, which is what we use to fund our regular capital projects, we have increased from 3.7 million between the two, so just close to $6 million. So that's huge on the capital side. Um, you'll see as we go along that there are a lot of capital projects that are coming in way over budget. And so this funding part actually helps us to you know, fill these gaps. And as I mentioned before, we have the collective bargaining agreements, which are included in the budget. Um, talked about those before. Other things that we've in increased is funding for police overtime during spring break. So again, the same issue we had for the last two years, we're trying our best to address this um, up front and not be reacting to something that we kind of know that's gonna happen to us. So we increased the funding for PD for overtime. And we also increased the funding for spring break. So last year we had a series of um, programs and this year we're already started working um, on programming for next year. Um, we also increased the funding for the trolleys. As you know, we had stopped the trolley service altogether during COVID. We then came back in 21. And what we're trying to do now is to basically add six more vehicles on the streets to get us from a 30 minute wait time to 20. The ultimate goal is to go back to 15. And that is a work in progress. Um, we have a lot of economic development um, initiatives in place to actually get more businesses to move to uh, Miami Beach. Uh, we've been successful so far, so we kind of just want to continue working on that. And then this year is the first year of the North Beach CRA. Um, so we are projecting to receive a million dollars in funding in the first year, which is significantly higher than what we had um, conservatively projected. So again, good news for North Beach. And then a couple of recommendations that we had at the last, uh, which is our first public hearing, is that we added money for living wages for our contractors. So because we had living wage increases for the union contract, we recommended that the contractors who work with the city have a similar um, increase. We also recommended funding a PAL program for teenagers who work with the police department and parks in the summer so we could actually be able to pay them something for their summer work. And then finally, we added uh, funding for FIU First Generation Scholarship, and that's to help um, to basically partner with the Miami Beach Chamber Education Foundation and FIU to help fund some students who would be first generation in their family going to college. All right, so just a quick update on our reserves, which is our rainy day fund. So as of quarter two, we had our projected reserve of $96 million, which is the highest it's been in the, in the city's history. Um, what we actually need to fund our three month goal is 88.5 as of Q2. So we actually had more than what we needed to fund our reserve um, for FY22. And so what we recommended is to take that 7.6 surplus and transfer that to fund some of our capital projects, because you'll see we have a lot of capital projects, the big gaps. Um, and then there's a resort tax. So we talked about the general fund, uh, which is like primarily funded by uh, property tax revenues. We also have a resort tax fund, which comes from money from the hotel taxes and also food and beverage taxes. So that's another major fund, funding source for the general fund. Um, and it also funds a lot of tourist related activities. So we try our best to fill that bucket, not just to three months, but to actually six months of reserve. And right now we have uh, in excess of what we need, we have $10.4 million. And so we recommended to the commissioners also take that 10.4 and fund some other projects um, in the capital side. The quick overview of the capital budget, Again, it's six hundred and eighty-seven million dollars. Um, we've had, uh, you know, you know, extreme increases in our projects, and so we have a variety of project gaps. Um, these are the funding sources that I pretty much have talked about. So we have fifty million dollars um, from the general fund and the resort tax fund. Um, we have another fund called the Quality of Life Fund that we basically reserve six point three million dollars to pay for um, projects. And then the Seagull Hotel, there's a vacation and there's a contract with the city to give us $7.4 million. So of that 7.4, we've collected five of which we set aside four for capital projects. So if you add these three together, we have about $25 million to give to the commissioner to say, let's use these dollars to fund our projects, um, make sure that it can move forward. 
Um, this is a project that it has been funded since I think back in 2016. You may recall some talk about a light rail trolley system. Um, the funds have not been spent. They've been sitting here but because the light rail project was kind of put on hold. Um, but so we always like to remind the commissioners these funds are here um, if they later on want to convert these to, you know, apply to other projects. So, so far what we funded, um, you know, at the first meeting was 6.3. Um, the Marine Patrol is a geo bond project that started off um, funded at 2.7. It was supposed to be a renovation project. Turns out we, hold, we need to demo the entire building because of structural damage. And so the, the gap actually increased by 3.4. So the commissioners actually went ahead and approved that 3.4 from the $25 million pot that we had. And then there's a Collins Art Workforce project that needed 2.9 and they also approved that project. So that left us with um, $19 million. And then at our first public hearing uh, last week, we actually made five more recommendations which the commissioners approved. Um, the fire station one project, which we thought was fully funded, um, based on the numbers that we've been getting, there's still a gap of 5 million. So we did apply for a grant and a part of the grant requires a 50% match. So we asked the commissioners to allow us to set aside that 2.5 you see there. As a placeholder, if we do get the grant, we could apply that to our match. Um, then there's a daycare relocation. Um, as a part of the fire station one project, we need to set aside funding to make sure that daycare is relocated and funded until there's a permanent home for the daycare. Um, then there's funding for Marine Patrol, transition while the Marine Patrol is being built. And there's a small need of uh, funding for Indian Creek landscaping. Now, I don't know if anybody on this committee plays pickleball, um, but a lot of people, a lot of our residents are interested in pickleball. And there was a request to actually fund a whole pickleball court. Um, obviously, because we're basically trying to fund our gaps, we didn't want to fund a new project or we couldn't afford to fund a new project. But what we are doing is funding some lighting for the, the pickleball court at the Miami Beach Golf Course. So you can play later in the evening until we can actually afford building a separate court. Almost there. Um, so these are some projects that we're gonna talk about during FY23. Um, we're not gonna fund them right now because the bids are still out. So until we have the actual cost, we're gonna just put them in the, you know, kind of like the back burner, but eyes wide open, these projects that are gonna come up for funding. So there's a 72nd Street complex. Um, that 16 to 41 million gap is just a starting point of the gap. And so some decision needs to be made. Um, if we do not have the hurricane and things don't get disrupted, it's possible on Friday that we're going to have a finance meeting to talk about the funding gap for these major projects. Be sure we're thinking $7 million, Maurice gave $5 million in the police headquarters. But we do have recommendations to fund at least the three um, below the 72nd Street project. The 72nd Street project, I think we need to probably you know, make some executive decisions on what to do next with that huge gap. And these are some other small projects that need to be funded, but again, we'll talk about those in the upcoming fiscal year. And finally, next steps, as I mentioned before. So we're really on the tail end of this budget process. Um, on the 28th, all things being equal, we'll have the final um, budget hearing. We'll adopt the final millage rate and the operating budget and the capital. And on October 1st, we're gonna basically start the new fiscal year. So any questions? Yes, Debbie, I, have I see. A question. I have a question. There was in our budget at one time, uh, it was used during COVID for other things, but there was a grant uh, available for first time home buyers, low income, that would help supplement their down payments or the purchase of a home. That mm -hmm. money was diverted during COVID. Is it coming back? Um, so I believe that actually still exists. It probably isn't a part of the operating budget, but we do get grants which the homeless department does, the, the housing and homeless department does monitor. So I don't think that's gone. And Debbie, we're going to have uh, Bianca uh, be introduced. Oh. Yeah, she's from Housing and Community Services, so she will be able to go into okay. that. Okay, and she's nodding her head. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Anything else? Any other questions for Tamika? I don't see. No. Anything? No. Thank you, Tamika. That was very informative. I understand the budget a whole lot better now. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Hopefully you have the meeting this week and uh, we can talk to you again next year. Yes, all things we need. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Tamika. No problem, Louis. Bye-bye. And as you said, Louis, now I have the pleasure of introducing Bianca from the Office of Housing and Community Services. So Bianca, welcome to our meeting. Unmute yourself and we're ready. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as stated, my name is Bianca Montenegro. I'm a program supervisor for the Office of Housing and Community Services. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I think I might have maybe met some of you here and there in other random meetings, um, but it's an honor to be here and to participate. Um, I'm going to be participating in these from here on out. So you're going to get used to my face. <laughs> um, so um, sad Tamika left, I didn't get a chance to say that that, that was a fantastic presentation. So um, yay for that. Uh, I, I wanted to let you guys know a little bit more about what our office does, what our department does, um, and specifically some of my programs, um, especially related to elderly services. Um, so our department as a whole, we do have, I'm gonna start it off because you were talking about it. Um, we have the housing project. So we have five different uh, locations. Um, and for those locations, we have low income housing. Unfortunately, at the moment, the wait list is closed because we just have so many people on that wait list. Um, so they're not really available right now just because there are so many people already living there and already on the wait list. Uh, we're hoping in the future that we'll be able to open up that wait list, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. On the flip side of that, we do have the first time home buyer program that is uh, grant based. So it's not city funds that's doing that, um, <clears throat> but it does exist. And so if you know somebody who is interested in that, you can always direct them to our office. And we also have the um, home rehabilitation program where if you already own a home and you have some uh, modifications that you need to make, we also help with that. For example, um, you know, God forbid you have to be in a wheelchair and so you have to build ramps in, in, in your home or that's just one example or any example of a million things that you might need in your home um, to rehabilitate it. We also have that project as well. So um, I hope that answered your question. Okay, perfect. Um, and yes, a lot of people in the city know us as the homeless department. So that's definitely part of the things that we do. We have the homeless outreach team um, and they have a two-part system. We have an in-house team that handles uh, the only walk-in center in Miami-Dade County for homeless outreach. So um, homeless individuals are welcome to come to our doors between 7.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Um, and receive services. Some of the services, uh, we of course, we help provide shelter when necessary and when uh, the homeless individual accepts it. We try very hard to encourage people to um, get shelter through our program, but we also help them uh, receive things like their IDs or their birth certificates, which often is a huge hindrance of them being able to have stable housing. So we help them through those kind of things. And there's a million other things the Homeless Outreach Department does, but I'm not here specifically to talk about that. So if you have questions about that, um, you can feel free to call our, our office and we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, we also have our youth services and um, we have a parenting program. They do parenting classes as well as home visits um, with new families. Um, so that's a fantastic program. We also have a wraparound service program. Some people remember it as Success University. Um, they recently received a new grant from the Children's Trust and they are now changing or updating their name to Family Pathways to more align with uh, what that uh, project is really doing. And so that wraparound service, they provide everything from A to Z, counseling, tutoring. Uh, if you just need you know, a little bit of support as a family to kind of get yourself going, they provide everything from A to Z there. And we also have a 
youth after school program for our middle schoolers over at Nautilus uh, Middle. And that's in conjunction with um, one of the parks and rec um, programs that they have there. I think it's called Teen Club. So those are the youth services. And then uh, we come to my program, uh, which we have the um, Resident and Elderly Resource Center. And so we help residents. Honestly, we have all walks of life coming into our uh, office. And, um, you know, there's always a need. The, nobody walks into our office uh, without a need, they usually have something that's going on in their lives that they need some extra support with. A lot of times we're able to provide referrals. The biggest thing that we see coming into our office right now is um, tenant landlord issues, whether you're behind on your rent or you just have an, uh, some kind of issue. And we help direct people to the right place to try and get help with whatever the situation is. <clears throat> Oftentimes it's rent assistance. We recently just received um, a EFSP grant that allowed us to help 11 different um residents to pay some rent that they were behind on. Unfortunately, that money went very quick. The good news is that we will be receiving some uh, CDBG funds very soon. I want to say in the next month or two, we'll be receiving those funds. Um, and that's going to be quite a bit more money and we'll be able to help even more people with rent assistance. In the meantime, when we personally don't have the funds, we help people apply to the county ERAP program, the emergency rent assistance program there. Um, and if, if they have issues with that, we'll try and help uh, step in as well. We'll make phone calls with them, things of that nature. So we try and go above and beyond for whatever that type of situation is. On the flip side, if there's an issue um, with a tenant landlord dispute kind of thing where maybe uh, the landlord says one thing and the tenant sends a, says another, uh, we will refer them to uh, Legal Services of Greater Miami and we'll put in that referral ourselves for them um, so that it comes from us. Um, <clears throat> Then we also have the elderly um, grocery program. So we provide groceries once a month. It's to supplement. I know a lot of the elderly, they do receive food stamps, but sometimes it's just not enough. Um, so we do provide this uh, grocery program where again, we, we provide uh, groceries once a month through, uh, we contract it out and, and that person will um, deliver, will buy and deliver the goods to the resident so they don't have to go anywhere. It gets delivered to them. Um, it's a really fabulous program. Last year, uh, we started off being only able to serve 96 elderly and um, through the procurement process and the grant uh, program that we got, we were able to increase that to 102. And we're hoping that maybe next year we'll be able to increase it a little bit more as well. Right now we have about 50 uh, to 60 people on the wait list for that program. Um, in January, we started a pilot program called uh, the Care Calls program, where any elderly that is perhaps um, Maybe they don't have family or they just don't have someone to check in on them. Or for whatever reason, they like to have somebody give them a call. We call them twice a month. Um, and if they tell us like, you know, twice a month is too much or too little, we try and adjust to um, whatever they would like. And we just check in on them. There's no, um, you know, back thought to why we're calling we're not calling to ask any you know specific questions or to give or take anything from them we simply just call to see how somebody is doing um, have a conversation with them uh, and let them know that you know they're not alone and it also gives the elderly person an opportunity that if they do have a need they're building a rapport with our department and our program and feel comfortable enough to uh, talk about that need um, and then we can address it if possible. 
Um, so those are just some of the things that we do. I'm sure there's a million other things that happen every day um, in our offices that I don't get to see every single day, but uh, I hope that gives you guys a great summary. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free. I'm gonna go ahead and in the chat, I'm gonna drop my email as well as my uh, office's phone number. And that way you can call, you can either ask for me or just ask general questions. Bianca, the chat's disabled, but if you could just oh, email I'm sorry. me, I'll get it to the committee. Perfect, no problem, we'll do that. Thank you, Bianca. Absolutely. I have a question about senior transportation. I learned by my elderly neighbor falling, breaking her arm. There is nothing that will give transportation to and from doctor's appointments. Um, now, the only service after exhausting every outlet is the STS service, but that's an application. It's a minimum 21 days. And then you either get accepted, you don't. But in the meantime, the elderly has needs, no family, no neighbors, really. It's, it's very, very difficult. And I'm surprised that the city of Miami Beach does not have anything to offer for seniors to get to and from either medical appointments, even surgery. And, you know, it's, it's um, well, nothing that works. De Debbie, let me, um, <clears throat> let me just jump in there. Yeah. So, um, Actually, the seniors do have uh, options uh, for transportation. Um, like you said, it's not as easy to access as you can. So if they're a patient of, let's say, you know, I'll use Mount Sinai, but if they're a patient here, um, when they're scheduling their appointment or when they're scheduling their surgery, or whatever, uh, the scheduler will often ask, do you have transportation? If they, if they don't, uh, there's two ways of going about it. Usually the insurance uh, covers transportation. Usually it's like a, a mileage, like 15 miles out. Right. That they'll, um, and then if not, like if you're having a procedure here at Mount Sinai, we do provide transportation. Just ask that, ask for it. Right. Uh, she has asked, she is a patient at Mount Sinai. She did ask her doctor, Dr. Jonah's office and so on. There is no transportation available. And um, insurance, apparently, the, the gap added on to Medicare uh, doesn't cover. Yeah. So, so yeah. the caveat there is that although you know, she's, she's a, a patient of Dr. Jonas, which is a private insurance, right. happens to be beat here in Mount Sinai. So, <clears throat> again, depending on the insurance that they have, um, they, they can actually call their insurance company and say, listen, I, I need to get to the doctor. You know, uh, what do I need to do? Some private uh, offices, sometimes, you know, they don't want to take that extra effort. It's, it's a lot of work to schedule uh, transportation for patients, because like you said, you have to apply for STS or you have to, you know, order it. Uh, then they come and all that stuff. And, so it, it is a little difficult, but. Um... Now, I just think we offer so many wonderful things for seniors. We have so much entertainment for them. We have a lot of grant money that goes to a lot of wonderful places. But when it comes to a, a medical issue, we do not have anything available for a senior on a very limited income who can't get on the trolley and can't get on a boss and it was even difficult for her with a cab because they didn't speak English. And I think the city really needs to address this issue as our population is aging even more. Does anybody from the senior housing, you all get transportation, correct? When you, when you need to get to a doctor? You're asking a, a specific member from a building? And uh, any of our buildings, I believe Lewis, they do get them transportation to and from medical. Right. So, uh, for anyone well, want to volunteer their their story? Um, j just uh, one more thing. Uh, years ago, you know, when we had the trolley was operating, the trolley used to make a scheduled stop at Mount Sinai. Is it that does, but she can't get on it with the cast. I mean, somebody's got to be, you know, oh. she she can't take the trolley. So, if that's it, does stop at Mount Sinai, and it's wonderful for anybody that needs it. It's just not available to somebody who's disabled at this point. 
So I think that it's something that if nobody else has ever run into it, I'm experiencing it and I'd like to look into it further. But uh, I, I do see, especially since people don't have children here, they don't have family here. And um, unfortunately her caretaker was her husband and he's been in, in a uh, facility now. So uh, I think we need to look at the, the services that used to be available years ago, the Jewish Community Center had it. When COVID got rid of any kind of transportation service, we as a city might need to look into offering something somehow for our seniors. And I don't know, Bianca, how do you handle it when any of your people have to get to, if you have homeless people that have to get to medical appointments? Yeah, so at the moment, um, we don't, we, our office, we don't provide specific transportation. Right. We do provide transportation for homeless individuals when we are taking them to shelter. Um, but at the moment, we don't have transportation specific for medical appointments or things of that nature. It is a conversation that we are having, though. It is a need, and we have noticed that need, not just for homeless outreach, but of course for elderly and just people in general, that is a need. Um, so it, we are definitely having those conversations around it. Um, we just, you know, we don't have a specific solution yet, but it is definitely something that we are absolutely looking into. And I agree with you, it is something that's absolutely needed. Um, and we need to find a solution uh, at some sometime in the near future, yes. And can I ask you, when you're transporting anyone, is this a service? I see the trucks that ride around. I know in other states, my hometown, upstate New York, they have these transportation services that are paid for by the county um, and maybe a little supplement per ride as opposed a couple of dollars as opposed to uh, like STS does $3.25. That's usually affordable. But how do you transport them when you need to? What service? Uh, we actually have our own city vans and we, okay. our, our staff will drive them to the shelters. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm glad yeah, you're we don't, we don't charge work. anything for that either. There's no supplement on the client side. Okay. Well, I look forward to your email and your phone number and we'll follow <laughs> up with this need. Thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any questions about the services that are offered? Bianca, do you want to tell us for our Facebook friends also what your address is that somebody can walk in and what your hours of operation are? Absolutely, absolutely. We used to be at the 555 building. As you guys know, that building is no longer there. Um, <clears throat> so my specific office for the uh, Resident and Elderly Resource Center is um, at City Hall, 1700 Convention Center Drive. And you have to go to the two double doors outside that are between the two outside elevators. Um, I don't have like a suite number for it because we're just this little tiny office in between the two outside elevators, but there's only two outside elevators that face each other and we're the two double doors in between it. Okay. And that entrance is on Convention Center Drive uh, on that side of City Hall. And the phone number? 305-673-7491. Okay, well, thank you for the fabulous work that you do for all of us in the city of Miami Beach. We love your update and look forward to seeing you again soon in the future. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. And now we're gonna move on to um, our updates from our um, senior center representatives. Council Towers South, Natasha, how's everything going there? You can unmute yourself. Natasha, unmute. Okay, Natasha, you have to unmute. Thank you, Lois. We can come back to her if you like. Okay. Um, Council Towers North, Gladys. Gladys, I called Gladys and she said she was going to come in to uh, be physically present, but uh, she didn't make okay. it. Okay. 
Federation, Magui. Magui está, está en silencio también, no sé. Um... I am mute. Ahora oh. Natasha volvió. Perfect. Ok, sí, estuvo. <laughs> Sorry for inconvenience. Natasha, why don't you go ahead? And Magui, unmute yourself. <laughs> Again, good morning, everyone. Waiting for news of the cyclone. <laughs> the Council Tower South Building continue to carry out the repair tax. By the way, we enjoy it. The salsa festival, the classical <laughs> music, emotion drive yesterday, amazing. A very nice, a nice activity on the ocean, a, in the occasion of Hispanic. Mm. A senior and a senior football also. <laughs> Also, Zumba are drawing classes and more. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Glad to hear everything's going well. Magui? Yes, I'm here. Great hours. Okay. Um, uh, some issues happened with the people around here entering uh, in our building, uh, you know, walking like I uh, live here and then stay in a little park we have behind our building and uh, smoking marijuana and uh, bring a, a city bike uh, that was stolen. And uh, we have to confront these people. And uh, he says, it's okay for me. I don't care. I came here because he's opened the garage door and he can walk in any any day, any uh, any time. And that is a dangerous for us in our building because he can go in, in the elevator and go everywhere they want it because they op in the open garage. And uh, we need more, you know, physical uh, help with the police or something like that because it's very, very difficult to deal with these people. It yeah, looks like a homeless, looks like a, uh, isn't, they are not aggressive. They, I don't, we don't have any, you know, kind of this type of uh, aggression, but it's dangerous. That, that's what I'm telling you. Uh, sometimes uh, we are doing a class of medication, meditation, and he came, sit down over there and uh, talking like uh, he's living here. And he was so dirty, but a, a people is uh, educated. It's not, uh, you know, the, not some kind of uh, alerting us or something like that. But it's, it's different because we know that it's an, a people that doesn't live here. And that's why I, yes. Has anyone discussed it with the police department or your representative there? I'm not sure about, but uh, the, the maintenance people and the I'm managing is taking care of that. But they asked me to show this uh, or to tell you uh, when the committee has the meeting that because we want more security in our building. Mm -hmm. Lewis, can you reach out to the appropriate person to have a meeting with them and see? I'll mention it to the chief of police to make sure that um, what we can do. And then obviously Bianca's listening in in terms of like a, uh, activity and I'm sure there's coordination. Thank you, Luis. Okay, otherwise is uh, the activities in our buildings are still the same. We had Zumba, we have uh, meditation, we have a Tai Chi, a different kind. Uh, we offer now flamenco also in 757 West Avenue on Tuesday at 3.30. So we have a lot of things. Uh, we join also the soccer program over there in Flamingo Park. So uh, for our health, our mind and, and physical health, we are okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. 
I have a good uh, Rosh Hashanah for everyone that is a Jewish. Thank you. Okay. Freedom, Zanilda, unmute yourself. Unmute. Anilda? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, I want to Hello. <laughs> All right. Uh, today I, I'm bringing an issue and, and, uh, that is uh, going on uh, for freedom. This is related to uh, Tai Chi classes. Mm -hmm. We have Tai Chi classes there every Thursday. It used to be from starting at four o'clock, 4 p.m. But uh, this time was changed. And the residents are complaining because they, when they go to the doctor in the morning, they are not, they come, uh, they arrive uh, tired and uh, it would be better if it would be continue to be at 4 p.m. But the thing is, so they asked me to bring the, the, the issue to, to the committee. But uh, before this, I tried, uh, I called Gloria Campos because uh, these, those classes are sponsored by the mayor and commissioners to mm -hmm. see if this could be changed. But she said no. So I don't know if, um, and I know that one of the participants, uh, he submitted to Commissioner Alex, uh, Alex Fernandez. Okay. But I don't know the outcome. Did they tell so, you the reason why it had to be changed? No. No, I don't know. It could be, it could very well be a valid reason. The teacher's not available. Um, I'm sure they didn't change it on a whim. So, Lewis, what I can do, I, I can speak to Gloria um, and and find out more information and, and report back to Anita and communicate with her. Okay, thank you, Louis. All right, thank you. Thank you, Anita. We'll be in touch. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> Anything else, Anilda? No, for me. All right, thank you. You're right. Rebecca Towers, Anna, Anna Rabello, you're in the office, correct? Yes, yeah, so, no, so far I don't have uh, anything. Uh, over there, everything is uh, rolling softly. We're not having any problems so far. Okay, good, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Stella Maris, Gabby? Gabby? Hi. Um, in Estela Maris, the painting works continue in the building. Um, the residents respond to the invitation to go to the Marlins Stadium. They were very happy to be provided the transportation to participate in this event. They also participated in the salsa show in Miami Beach, Bansha, as part of the celebration of the Man of the Spanish. Um, uh, and there is also participation in the soccer program. We also con congratulate UNIDA for the celebration of the Spanish uh, month. Um, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, UNIDAD, Larissa. Is the rest on this morning? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Hi. Good morning. I gave Luis a picture. Let's see if he can share it. Right there. That was Friday, Hispanic <laughs> Heritage Month event. Wow. It was a very successful event on Friday. We have uh, a lot of visitors, a lot of uh, guests. The mayor was here. Mr. Victor Diaz was here. Ms. Mari Bauer was here. Um, Michael Gongora, Luis Callejas, and um, some other representation from the Miami Beach uh, uh, um, I forgot the name, but anyways, there was a lot of people here. We had a lot of fun. 
that's, <laughs> that's the point. And from the classes, I do have to say that we have a new class of arts and craft that we have added to the calendar on Wednesdays afternoon. So we have the class on Wednesdays afternoon from 8 to 4.30 and then the, the other arts and craft on Fridays from 10 to 12. It's a very successful class, so we have to extend it, okay? For the rest, uh, everything is good in Unidad. Um, nothing else to report on my side. Thank you. Great picture. It is a great picture. Yeah. 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 Yes, good morning, everyone. All good here for, are for my seniors and creating activities for them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you talk to us about the senior soccer change? I was just going to ask about soccer. How's it going? Everything is good. So uh, tomorrow is the last day, but, you know, for the weather inconvenience, maybe a change for uh, October 11. I don't know. I don't know the exactly um, date, but I'll send the email for it, you know, everyone. October 11th, yes. Okay. Hispanic Affairs, Gabriel, are you here? Yes, he's absent. He's been out busy with uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Oscar, do we have some updates from Mount Sinai? Anything we need to know? Um, no, not really. Everything's going well. Um, I can't believe this hurricane season has started so late in the year, but, um, uh, at least we're um, hey. avoiding it with any storms. So, <clears throat> uh, no updates at this time. Okay. Thank you very much. October's calendar of events. We have, uh, all of the Places open again, Flamingo Park, North Shore Park, and Youth Center, and Scott Rayco are all yeah. open. Lewis, I do you have, have, I have to ask Parks and Recreation, they're not going to be ready until tomorrow, so I will send them in an email uh, to the Great. committee. And you're, anyone in uh, our Facebook community here, you're welcome to call the centers, and they'll be happy to email you the calendars also. So we're back in full swing with a lot of activities. Our upcoming meeting dates, we have October 24th, November 28th, and December 26th. Now, December 26th will either get moved or canceled due to the holiday. So mark your calendars for October 24th and November 28th. Leave December 26th. We'll talk about it at the next meeting. Okay. For October's meeting, um, I'd like to get some suggestions for any topics you'd like to cover. Uh, we have on our agenda here the city election and ballot initiatives. If everyone's agreeable with that, we'll go ahead and get information for the elections. Do I have yeah. anyone opposed to that? Oh. No? Thank you, Lewis. Go ahead and get us that information. We love you. Thank you so much. And, and thank you, Commissioner Richardson, for sharing you with us and giving up all your time to um, dedicate yourself to our needs. Thank so we you. appreciate it. Thank and you. Now we're ready for your report, Lewis. I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be very fast. I'm going to start with um, this image uh, that's going to come on the screen. Uh, oh, yes. Good. Mm -hmm. at, at the July meeting, Maggie and I talked. There was an issue with the number at uh, for, uh, for at Federation, uh, we got that and it looks like the city, the the, the building's going to be named again Federation. It changed briefly uh, on yes. that. And then uh, Natasha also uh, talked about uh, the big bus tour company parking in front of Council Towers. I'm in communication with the company to try to make sure that they rectify the issue. Okay. And talk to Natasha. And Same. then you got it. And then we're going north quickly. Stella Mars, uh, Gabby, we're still on it. At the last committee meeting, the committee requested a letter be drafted. Uh, let me share my screen really quickly. Uh, 
I drafted the letter. I'm gonna just put it up for the committee to look at. I'm gonna to talk to Debbie uh, to get this letter to her and have her give any edits. And then we can send it to the secretary at FDOT. On last Wednesday, the commissioner and I went to uh, out there to Northwest 111th Avenue and met with the secretary. And they are uh, taking into consideration his request to speed up the project. I know uh, city manager Alina Hurak has also expressed that desire. Um, and so hopefully we get a response to this letter uh, once I get Debbie to sign it and we issue it out. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to read it. I can send it to the whole committee. And if anybody has issues, we can you can let, email me back. We can allow for a week uh, of uh, comments back before Debbie can issue it, um, however you would like to proceed. But, uh, and then also I just received an, a picture, uh, Gabby, from you to trim something around Stella Maris, uh, some vegetation. So we're gonna talk to uh, public <coughs> for that. Anybody have questions, Chair? No, I think the letter as well, send it to me and, and uh, I might just add one little thing, adding something, but uh, just adding yeah. Miami Beach after Harding again. But uh, email that to me now and I can get it right back to you. Has everybody had a chance to read it? This is the first time I, I, everybody sees it. So if okay. you'd like, I could email it to everybody. Okay, we'll take a look. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll be at May I? Yes. Yeah. Natasha? Yes, yeah, sorry, because I forget with emotion. <laughs> I forgot. In our building, there are two elevators one big and one smaller. Uh, the, big, the big elevator is dedicated for constructor in materials, etc. So it's in working, it's or for order. And it's very difficult for residents and constructor, usually uh, the smaller uh, elevator is very difficult many days ago, more than very days, many days with this situation is very difficult, sorry. Okay, so I'll talk to our building department who issues out the elevator uh, inspections, if not public works, and then also communicate with your building administration. Luis, Luis. Luis? Yeah, I, through the chair. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Carolina. Uh, I'm sorry. So is the same problem in Council Tower North? Okay. Thank Maybe you. seven years ago, the same problem. Okay. May. Thank you. That was happening in, in uh, Federation Tower when we were um, in remodeling. And we had to use only one elevator for two years for not two years, almost uh, one year or something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can do something. Mm -hmm. Louis, what about uh, upcoming food distributions? Yes, let me quickly change to that. We are moving to one distribution a month. Um, so here's, I'm gonna share the flyer with the committee and I'm also gonna send it to everybody. It's going to be in Mid Beach. And this is uh, a new program that we're hopefully starting uh, behind the Wells Fargo Bank on 41st Street, Thursday, October 27th at nine in the morning. What is this? Recipients must certify they are income eligible to receive food? Yeah, so there's going to be a quick uh, sign in sheet. Basically, it's to report back to Farm Share. Um, that we are not, you know, just selling the food. It, it's reporting back to the federal government if there's uh, uh, food distributed that is federal. Okay. It's nothing too strenuous. It, it, no IDs require just a name, signature, and an address. Okay. September 14th commission meeting. I'm going to keep it short. I'm just going to highlight two things. Uh, iguana control. That has been a big issue in Mid Beach. 
there's a lot of iguanas, and so the city commission is looking to spend the extra funds on that. Um, and then Commissioner Fernandez had a smoking ban on the beach. Uh, so that's not going to be allowed anymore, or it's going to be really enforced now. Uh, so hopefully that's an improvement. Um, the Jewish Community Services, and I'm, and I'm uh, sad that they're, they're not available or they have a vacancy now, but um, they pro they're proposing a affordable housing project in South Beach uh, that looks pretty promising. So hopefully we get more details on that. Um, and the big item was uh, the budget and we saw a big presentation on it already. So um, hey. the next commission meeting is this Wednesday to approve the budget. And then the regular commission meeting is October 26, uh, 8.30 in the morning. If you want to come provide any comments, the, the mayor takes comments on anything at that time. And then I think we have two vacancies, Jewish Community Services and Blackstone. And I'm trying to fill, I, I'm communicating with Blackstone to try to fill these, these vacancies as well as with uh, Jewish Community Services. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Does anybody have any new business or anything you need to discuss before we adjourn for today? Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Everybody's unmuted. No hands up. No. Well, I want to thank you, Bianca. It's great to meet you. Welcome to our meetings, and we look forward yeah, to seeing you in the future. And uh, all the representatives, thank you for your time. Everyone have a beautiful week. I need a motion to adjourn, please. Thank you. I. Yeah. Oscar, first and second by Carolina. All those in favor? Yay. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Happy to you. adjourn. Passed unanimously. Thank I'm you ready. all and see you next month. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. So happy to meet you. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye.